Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems, and today we've got an intriguing hardware comparison on the docket. The Geekom IT12 Mini PC, priced at about $620, versus the high-end ultra-portable framework laptop, catered to the small to medium business class, which will set you back a cool $1,400. Interestingly, under the hood, both sport an Intel i7-1260P, 12-core CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 memory, and a Swift 512-gig SSD. Here's the fascinating part. Let's set aside for the moment the clear portability edge the laptop has. If we peel away the screen, webcam, keyboard, trackpad, and battery, and that sharp looking machined aluminum chassis, we essentially have a $700 PC core. Now pop this into a 3D printed case and on paper, it mirrors the mini PC. But does it really? Today, we're investigating the true value of these machines. Does the heftier price tag of the premium laptop come with a bump in performance over an identically spec mini PC? Or could the mini PC's more robust cooling solution be the key to leveraging its processor? Or are we just trying to add a sprinkle of drama to this mini PC review? Well, the prospects are endless, so let's go ahead and dive right in to find out. It's the money. Kicking things off with the Geekom IT12 review, this little PC arrives in a box that's just flashy enough relative to its price range. As soon as you slide off that lid, you're greeted with the mini PC sitting comfortably in a sleek foam and plastic wrap. It's a pretty solid first impression. Now, in terms of accessory, it brings along a standard 90 watt external power supply with the traditional barrel jack, an HDMI cable, a vase mount bracket in case you wanna hang this PC somewhere neat, and of course, a quick start guide to get you up and running in no time. Moving on to the specs and features of the Geekom IT12, this compact PC has the dimensions of 117 by 112 by 45 millimeters, so it's quite the tiny box of performance. Powering this device, we've got the 12-core Intel i7-1260P processor split between four performance cores and eight efficiency cores. The base clock speed is 2.1 gigahertz with a max boost clock ramping up to a solid 4.7 gigahertz. The CPU carries a base TDP of 28 watts and can turbo up to 64 watts. As for graphics, we're looking at an integrated 96 EU Iris XE graphics. Loosening the four captive screws reveals the IT12 16 gigs of crucial DDR4-3200 RAM. Connectivity-wise, we've got an Intel AX211 Wi-Fi 6E card and Bluetooth 5.2. Storage is managed by a 512 gig Kingston M.2 NVMe SSD. And for those of you who want more storage, there's an additional 2260 M.2 SATA slot and a SATA expansion bay for a 2.5 inch SSD. As far as I.O., starting with the front of the unit, we have a power button, a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and two 10 gigabit type A USB ports. To the right side, we've got a Kensington lock. Now, when we head to the back, we've got two HDMI 2.0 ports, each capable of supporting up to 4K 60 hertz displays. Also present are two USB 4 ports, each boasting 40 gigabit speeds with alt display port mode, which can support 8K 60 hertz displays. Besides these, there's one 10 gigabit per second and one USB 2 type A port and a 2.5 gigabit LAN port and the DC power jack. Finally, if we make our way to the left side, we find an SD card reader. Quite the loaded mini PC. Getting this bad boy up and running was a breeze. I simply hooked up the power, connected it via HDMI to my 4K panel, and paired a wireless keyboard and mouse combo. Powering on, I booted into the BIOS and wasn't surprised to see that there are not many user configurable options here. I just set the fan to performance mode, and after a reset, I was immediately met with the familiar Windows 11 setup routine. I speedily got through the process, opting for the no at thankyou.com hack to set up a local account, and just like that, it was up and operating in no time. Following the Swift system and driver update, I was presently surprised. There was zero bloatware to be seen. No third-party antivirus or anti-malware software, no proprietary apps or diagnostic tools, just a crisp, clean Windows 11 install. 
I took some time to get my essentials on there, productivity and content creation tools like MS Office, Adobe's Holy Trinity, Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere Pro. And of course, for when it's time to unwind, I installed Steam and pulled in a compact game library. And I'm happy to report, every single thing installed, launched, and ran buttery smooth, no glitches, no hiccups. All right, time to put the IT12 through its paces and see how it stacks up against the premium laptop I've been daily driving for the better part of two years now. To get an initial read on how Geekcom fine-tuned the 1260p, I started with a 10-minute Cinebench R23 stress test, keeping a close eye on the stats. Instantly, the data makes it clear that these two aren't playing on the same field. The mini PC trails behind the laptop by 22% in multi-core performance and 5.3% in single-core performance. Now, there are a few factors behind this variance. First up is CPU power draw. It seems like while Geekcom kept the package power draw at its base 28 watts during multi-core loads, Framework managed to nudge a couple extra watts from the 1260p. Framework also hit a peak turbo power of 56 watts, about 10% more than the IT12. Sure, an extra couple watts might not sound like much, but it translates into the Frameworks i7 maintaining a 450 megahertz higher average clock speed. That's what propels it to its higher score, but keep in mind that uptick in the blue line towards the end of our graph. Because with great power comes, well, great heat. If we check out the CPU temp during that 10 minute test, both systems instantly spike to a scorching 100 degrees as they maxed out their power and frequencies. But here's where it gets interesting. The IT12 cooled down to around 80 degrees and held its ground while the framework slid down to about 85 Celsius, but soon started creeping back up past 95. By the test's end, we see the CPU beginning to throttle due to its thermal constraints, with no more room for heat dissipation, it drops the frequency to shed heat. So while framework CPU tuning offers more power, Geekcoms offers more stability. Remember, less heat typically means less noise. With a larger heat sink and fan, the IT12 is noticeably quieter than the framework, But compared to other mini PCs I've tested, don't expect whisper quiet PC while it's in performance mode. However, remember, there is a quiet mode. Okay, it's pretty obvious. The framework takes the lead when it comes to heavier multi-threaded tasks, running a solid 22% faster than the Geekcom across an average of three Blender renders. Even in Premiere Pro video editing tests, the Geekcom lags trailing by 9.5%. And when we crank up the pressure with a 3D Mark Night Raid test, the Geekcom falling 7.4% behind. But hold up, when we transition to the PC Mark 10, testing a blend of usual single core productivity tasks with a dash of multi core video and 3D rendering, the Geekcom is only trailing by a slight margin of 2.3% things tighten up even more in Photoshop, where the difference narrows to less than 2%. Here's where it gets interesting. When we put these machines to the test in productivity applications like Microsoft Office, web browsing, video conferencing, and media consumption, the Geekcom pulls a surprise, scoring 8.4% better than the framework in the Underwriters Laboratory's productivity test. I know what you're thinking. How is that possible? Wasn't the framework beating the Geekcom by 5% in single core performance in Cinebench? Well, yeah, but let's remember, sustained single core 3D rendering workloads aren't the same thing as bursty single core workloads that accounts for over 80% of typical PC use. Digging deeper, examining CPU power usage, the Geekcom draws more power, approximately 20 watts on average, compared to a mere 12 for the framework, yet this extra eight watts only nudges the Geekcom CPU temperature up about 3.3 degrees higher on average than the framework. Now, here's the real kicker. Inspecting the individual CPU cores, the Geekcom cores are hitting max boost clock 
indicated in green a lot more often with scarce drops below the base frequency, which is shown in red. However, when comparing the framework, we see more of those red dips and considerably less of the green max boost clock. Bottom line is the Geekcom IT12 prioritizes stability in heavy multi-core workloads and performance in typical day-to-day -day tasks, all while doing it with more efficiency. That to me sounds like a clear win, but let's shift gears from comparing these two systems, which I just did to demonstrate how manufacturers can fine tune distinct performance even with identical specs. Obviously, if you prioritize portability, a desktop computer won't even be on your radar, regardless of its size or processing power. However, if mobility isn't a concern, you can snag a PC that's practically invisible, sipping less power than most desktop CPUs while outshining a premium laptop in everyday tasks. And let's not forget the flexibility of crafting a personalized setup tailored to your preferences, just like what I've done here, all while staying comfortably under the price tag of a high-end laptop. All right, let's get back into the thick of this IT12 review. I put all the ports through their paces and they've all been rock solid, handling real world transfer speeds without breaking a sweat. Now, I don't have any 8K displays lying around, but I can confirm the IT12 smoothly drives four 4K displays without even a hint of lag. In terms of connectivity, both Wi-Fi and ethernet speeds are spot on, effortlessly maxing out my Xfinity Gig Plus internet. I'm currently hooked up to my peripherals via a USB 4 hub, and it's been butter is smooth, and just for the fun of it, I connected the IT12 to my Razer Core X Thunderbolt E GPU, rocking an RTX 3060 Ti, and it worked flawlessly. It even outpaced the Thunderbolt 4 framework laptop in the few games I tried out. This was more to gauge the USB 4 capabilities, and like Cloud Pixel pointed out in my community post, at that point, an ITX build would be a more viable alternative. But it's worth noting that this machine can easily handle high-speed USB 4 Thunderbolt devices like expansion hubs, storage drives, capture devices, and more. However, keep in mind that you won't get a guarantee of compatibility with all Thunderbolt devices on USB 4, so be smart about your purchase. Don't buy anything you can't return. When it comes to noise levels, sure, the fan can get loud in performance mode, but Right now, I'm on silent mode and it's seriously quiet. In fact, all the data and charts for this review, even the script, were done on the IT12 in quiet mode. And trust me, it was barely audible. As far as cons, a few things stuck out to me. At this price range, it would have been nice to see a more compact GAN power supply. Moreover, it wouldn't hurt to have the flexibility of powering this rig through one of its USB 4 ports as it stands now, your only option is through the barrel jack. In this era of affordable M.2 storage, the 2.5 inch SATA bay doesn't necessarily score big on the utility chart. The secondary M.2 slot is good for extra storage and it'd be cool to reclaim the SATA bay space for beefing up the cooler. But these are just my thoughts and I get they can be a bit subjective. Looking at things objectively, the IT12 really shows its metal with its well-honed i7-1260P, a perfect match for professionals who don't need mobility and aren't keen on a big, power-hungry desktop tower, and who deal with productivity tasks, massive database, spreadsheets, desktop publishing, vector graphics, a fair share of coding, Photoshop work, and even light photo editing. However, the integrated Iris XE graphics, while solid for most tasks, might leave you wanting if you're into 3D workloads or gaming, especially when compared to a Ryzen 5000 or 7000 packing mini PC like the B-Link Sear 5 that I reviewed not too long ago. Value-wise, while the Geekcom IT12 is fairly priced for a 12th gen Intel PC, if you're not tied to Intel, something like the B-Link Sear 6 Pro sporting the Ryzen 7 7735HS will give you comparable CPU performance 
with a more capable integrated GPU for about a hundred bucks cheaper. There are a lot of choices out there in a wide range of prices, but any way you go, these mini PCs offer outstanding performance, great efficiency, and a practically invisible package. If you have any questions about the Geekcom IT12, ask in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.